Welcome to Quillsword Blogcast. Is Ukraine important to America? Yes. Oh, you wanted the why part? Why didn't you say so? Russia wants to be the sole superpower. Russia is going to be a pain in the neck until it either gets what it wants, and no one else sane wants, or until it gets smacked hard enough to come to its collective senses. We seem to be in the middle of that latter one with Ukraine right now. Let Russia bash its brains out on Ukraine. I know it sounds harsh, but it'll do Russia a world of good. Seems to be helping Ukraine straighten out some of its kinks as well. Win-win. No, it's not quite that simple. Nation states seldom make anything simple. Russia is not the only country that's vying to replace the U.S. as sole superpower. In this corner, we have China. China is presently playing the belligerent cry bully. That's for a variety of reasons. Mostly the CCP can't buy its way out of the mess it has made. Be that as it may, China has been beating the heck out of the war drums to threaten Taiwan into returning peacefully to captivity. Yeah, it's not working. China has managed to scare Vietnam and the Philippines into security deals with Japan and the U.S. And yes, that's extremely counterproductive. This is where Ukraine becomes important. China is convinced it is better than anyone else, especially Russia and the U.S. Okay, it has some doubts about the U.S., but it definitely is better than Russia, which has more combat experience and military equipment than China can shake a stick at. The same Russia that is losing a war of attrition to a tiny neighboring nation state that is only receiving funding and equipment in aid. China expected Russia to get hurt if it got into a real fight with the U.S. But Ukraine? Heck, Ukraine didn't even expect that and those guys major in overconfidence. China has had to rethink this whole invading Taiwan thing. Oh, they never really wanted to have to do it, but they were fully confident the U.S. would just watch and Taiwan would be easy pickings. Taiwan is a hundred miles from mainland China by sea. Amphibious assaults are the worst. Ask the guys that landed on Omaha on D-Day. Russia can't handle a land invasion. China is no longer confident that they can safely invade Taiwan. Thanks, Ukraine. Oh, so now you're all mad. Why do we have to be the world's policemen? If Russia and China want to rule the world, let them sort it out. We shouldn't have to worry about all this stuff. You're that kid that never wanted to brush his teeth, aren't you? How'd that work out? How many fillings did you need before you figured out that just brushing twice a day was a lot less hassle? No, I'm not really being facetious. The U.S. is pretty self-reliant and very secure. Two oceans make invading a true nightmare. But it's not the only kid on the block. Truth is, being a hermit is not nearly as much fun as it seems when you're mad about having to do homework. It's even worse when you're a nation-state. Much, much worse when you're the world's sole superpower. Think about it this way. You live in podunk country, population 10 million, main export construction grade sand. Podunk won't be breaking any economic records, but it has a lot of sand and the government is pretty okay. You like all the people, well, except that one guy, and it's home. Low regulation, low unemployment, and a decent education. Not a bad little developing country. Your kid wants to go to college in the U.S., and you have a management job at sand haulers. Life is good. Until Russia shows up and deports you to Siberia. Nope, not kidding. They call that one Russification. The Russians deport natives of a nation that they've invaded and repopulate it with ethnic Russians. How many podunks before the current border crisis looks tame by comparison to the hordes of people streaming into the U.S. begging for asylum? Not many, I assure you. Yes, for the record, China has its own version using ethnic Han Chinese. So no, having China win does not improve things. 
Even if the miracle occurs and the winner of the Takeover Earth contest decides to leave the U.S. very much alone, the rest of the planet will be running for our borders. The only way to stop them will be to become the monster we hate. I vote no. But the truth is the miracle won't occur. Sooner or later, the totalitarian winner will come knocking on our door. We will have spent we will have to spend ten times what we presently do on defense just to keep that monster at bay. And no, I'm not kidding. Nukes are the only option. They are expensive all the way around. Building one is the cheap part. Refining the uranium and maintaining the delivery systems, ICBMs, bombers, and submarines. Those things are really, really expensive. Yes, we pay for all that stuff right now. But we also have allies across the globe that let us forward deploy. Military speak, for they let us build bases so we don't have to haul everything from North America every time we do something. That buys us more than cheaper transport. It buys a lot of local goodwill. Sure, you hear about the times when things go wrong. That's inevitable. But you don't hear about how soldiers help out the locals or even just buy stuff from them, helping the local economy. It seems a little thing, but it pays big dividends. Every nation state, every culture, every ethnic group, every little kid that remembers how Americans gave them candy, every positive adds to the U.S.'s enormous soft power. It's also one less nation state that we have to build nukes to target. Instead of needing tens of thousands of nukes as we would if we were isolated, we can get by with just nearly 6,000. Better yet, the chances we ever even have to use the thing stay very close to zero. The chances that we have to actively target countries worldwide with nukes and fire them get very close to 100% if we are the only free nation left on the planet. Seriously, just brush your teeth already. And for the record, we're more like the world's all monitor than its policemen. Heck, we're just handing the baton to, the, to Ukraine at the moment. And not because we're being jerks. Well, not intentionally anyway. But because letting Russia self-destruct is for the best. While the chances of a nuclear exchange are slim at the moment, having American piloted F-35 screaming over Moscow would increase those chances significantly. Arguably, a conflict with the U.S. would begin and end over Europe, where nukes wouldn't be an issue. But ironically, that could be a saving grace for Russia. A quick loss might be more sustainable for the regime than a, the slog that they're presently in. But letting Russia wear itself out over Ukraine while we push our older stuff across the border is likely to end the present Russian regime. It may end 500 years of Russian aggression. Russian history reads a lot like a skipping record. What is certain is that Russia's superpower plotting will come to an ignoble end. And it will very likely take China's aspirations with it. Oh, the world won't magically become all sweetness and light, but the problems will be more spread out and handleable. For a few decades at least. That's when it will be safest to step down its hall monitor, if we still want to. At the very least, we can take a nap or two. <laughs> Until the next round of fun begins. <laughs>